All right, guys, we're going to add to our notes again. We're going to do pages 35 and 36, and we're going to talk about um, quadratic story problems a little bit. We're going to talk about these a lot more later, but I feel like it's good to talk about it a little bit right now. Okay, so um, on 35, we have this very helpful guide that's going to show us like all the things that we should be looking for kind of in our story problems. And then like when you glue this one in, you should leave some space to the side. That's where I'm going to draw some pictures, although I'm really just going to draw them on the back, but you could just draw it right next to them. And so first, I really just want to go through like when we're looking at a quadratic, those key points that we talk about when we're graphing, those are super duper important for answering story problems as well. Because at those key points, key things are happening. And so if a parabola is describing a real life situation, probably something really important is happening at those key points. Okay, so kind of the main one that we talk about is the vertex, which actually, let me get the right colors here. I kind of want these ones. So the vertex is super duper important. It is kind of like the most important point. And at the vertex, there's kind of two numbers happening there. And so really, we have to pick the number that we want. So if we want the x value, usually that's like, when is the object at its maximum height? Or if the parabola is going the other direction at its minimum value for some reason? Like, when did that happen? And then the y value is kind of like how high did it actually get? Like what was that maximum height? Okay, so kind of two different values there, when versus how high. Um, also, like if you look very carefully at your story problem and what your x-axis or your x variable is talking about versus your y variable, that is usually a very good clue as well. Another key point are kind of our x-intercepts, which are also sometimes called zeros. Um, now, really the one that matters here is the positive one. That's kind of like, when did it hit the ground? Or like, how long was it in the air for? Because like, it did all this, and then it landed. Um, and so that could be when or how long, depending on, again, the x variable and what it's counting by. The one over here in the negative uh, doesn't matter because negative stuff when we're talking about real life situations usually doesn't matter. So we just ignore it. The other key value that we often look at is the y intercept. And the y intercept is kind of like when did we start? Like how high was it off the ground when we started? Like did it have a starting height? Like if you think about the uh, football problem that we did. The y-intercept wasn't zero because the punter punts the football out of the air. So it was like a foot off the ground because that's how high he uh, kicked it from. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it could also be that they just generally ask you, like, how high is the object in the air after, like, x seconds? So in that case, they're giving you an x value to plug into your equation to find the y value, so that could also happen. But knowing what we know about how to graph should make these questions pretty easy to answer usually. So let's try a couple. So example one here, the following equation represents the path of a dolphin's jump, blah, blah, blah. Sketch the path that he takes and find the maximum height that he reaches. So <clears throat> if I think about a dolphin jumping, I feel like I can see that path. Okay, so if I flip this over and kind of draw this one out. And again, it's just a sketch, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if I go back and kind of take a little notice, that makes sense because my quadratic is negative. Also, when I look more closely at this, I can see that it is in vertex form. So when I'm in vertex form, I know the vertex. And so this one happens to be at 3 comma 7. 
So I'm going to go label that right now. Um, so they want me to figure out, what do they want me to figure out here? Sketch the path that he takes and find the maximum height that he reaches. So I want the maximum height. That is the vertex. That's like low key a vertex thing. And we want how high. So that is specifically the Y value of the vertex, which I mean, don't need to do any math for that. The Y value of the vertex is right there at seven. So this is just seven feet. No math necessary. That's kind of it. All right, looking at example two, a model for a company's revenue from selling a software package is blah, 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 where P is the price in dollars of the software. What price will maximize revenue and find the maximum revenue? So kind of got that keyword maximize again. But this time they do want two things, the price and what is the max revenue. So they do want two things here. Um, but since it's the maximum, I think it's just both the values at the vertex. So I don't know that I necessarily need to sketch this one out. However, I can tell that it's a pointing down parabola. Also, I can tell right here we are in standard form. So when I'm in standard form, if I want to find the vertex, let's rewrite this little equation. Um, if I want to find the vertex, that's when we had to do our little baby equation, the negative b over 2a. So we'd have negative 500 over 2 times a, which is negative 2.5, or 5 over 2, you know, like it's kind of nice, mainly because the 2s will divide out. And so really this ends up being, and the negatives will divide out, this will be 500 over 5 for 100. Now this is the x value, which is really represented by p, which is the price. So the price that will maximize revenue is $100. We also wanted to figure out though what was the maximum revenue. So we also want to find that y value, which is the r. And so we want to plug 100 in now. So kind of big numbers, but we're going to have negative 5 over 2. I'm going to do it. 100 squared plus 500 times 100. So 100 squared, is that going to be 10,000? Oh my word, big numbers. And then over here we're going to have 50,000. Which that makes sense because when I take half here, we're at 5,000. And then when I multiply this, I get negative 25,000, which is half and the opposite sign of this one, which happens when we're finding the vertex, that little pattern where it's double and opposite. And so the maximum revenue here is going to be $25,000. Cute. All right, last but not least. The height of a projectile fired straight up in the air with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second is modeled by this equation here, where h is height in feet and t is time in seconds. The table below represents the data for another projectile. Which projectile goes higher? How much higher? Okay, so we are trying to figure out how high it goes. <laughs> Again, I think I... I'm asking for another vertex value because how high is like the maximum and then like how much higher, well, also a maximum. Okay, so I'm going to do a little sketcheroo on the back here of these two parabolas, I think, because we have the equation parabola and then we have the table parabola. So the equation is actually in factored form. Um, negative, so pointing down, and then my two x-intercepts are 0, 
and 4. So that's kind of nice. So we got 0 and then 4. Then we can find the center by counting in. So the x value of my vertex is going to be 2. And so then we can figure out, like I know it's going to be a parabola like this, but we do want to know how high. So we're going to take that 2 and plug it into our equation. So we had negative 16, I believe. Yeah, times 2 times 2 minus 4. So over here, we'll also have a negative 2. So the negatives will divide out. And really what we end up here with here is 4 times 16, which is 64. So our vertex is at 2 comma 64 right here, which seems pretty high. But let's go look at our table. Okay, so the table um, <clears throat> here has our x values. And then our height values or our y values. And I feel like I can see that <laughs> it's only getting up to 36 because, like, right here it starts coming back down. So, like, <clears throat> at, point, at point 0.5, it was at 20. And then at 2, it's already back down to 32. So, like, at the vertex, it's half as high as the other one. So like, yeah, this parabola is definitely shorter. Sort of, it reached its maximum at 1.5 comma 36. And so I can tell that the equation projectile went higher, specifically 64 feet. So which projectile goes higher? The equation projectile and like how much higher well this one got only 36 feet high versus the other one that got 64 and I feel like if I want to know how much higher I want to subtract it's like 64 minus 36 just going to do some little uh, style subtraction right here 28 feet higher that's a lot all right, well, hopefully thinking about some story problems will be helpful for our quiz, and I'll see you on the next one.